Hello YouTube! This is the second part of my report about the very mysterious island of Matsua, a very small piece of land in the faraway Pacific Ocean in the Kuril Islands chain. And it holds secrets that hopefully will be uncovered in the near future, or maybe not. But we should be all interested in that island because a number of nations had their own interest and I've told you about Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan but there is much more to reveal about the island so let's continue our exploration of the mysteries and secrets of Matua another mystery is really what happened to the weapons that were located on the island all the heavy arms tanks, artillery, and probably other types of advanced weapons that we simply do not know anything about. Now, when the Japanese surrendered without a fight, once again I underline it because they were fighting on the other islands, but not on this one. When the Soviets took over, they uh, acquired rifles from the garrison, but nothing else. Maybe the arms, the weapons were thrown into the volcano or are hidden mothballed in their underground arsenals, weapon storages. There were tunnels deep into the volcanic mountain behind uh, which, uh, you know, led across the island with an underground railway. These tunnels were sealed by the Japanese in February of 1944, as far as we know, when the garrison was reduced in size. 3,841 persons surrounded to the Soviets without a fight. As for the volcano, there is a road on the slope where tracked uh, vehicles used to haul some, something to the crater left uh, visible traces. Russian Admiral Avakans believes that the Japanese carried out their main mission to the fullest. They concealed all traces and facts that could reveal their actual and true purpose on Matua. So, we still do not know what they were actually engaged in on the island. I need to add that according to the Admiral, uh, the Russians did find autoclaves, autoclaves uh, you know, strong heated containers for chemical reactions and other processes using high pressures and temperatures. And the Japanese writing on them stated simply secret product. Then there is another mystery. Why were the Americans so interested in the island of Matua? According to the Russian information, after World War II, President Truman asked Stalin to relinquish this small island to the United States. Stalin responded that he would do so in exchange for the Aleut Islands. We have no independent confirmation of that, so it's up to the American historians if they have access to the secret information to confirm this. But the Americans did shell the island during World War II, and the Japanese uh, sunk one of the United States ships. Then, that's interesting, there are very strange incidents during the, Soviet, the time that the Soviets controlled Matua. They held the island from September of 1945, but did not really do a good job investigating it. They did not consider it more important than any other Kuril Islands. That's interesting. There was only a commission of three military persons that was dispatched to do the inventory of the um, trophies. And they only had five days to do so. Now, to understand how little time that is, one must know how many items were left behind by Japanese. And some of those items and, and hardware has been very well preserved. One of the reasons for the reluctance could be the art of deception and the techniques used by the Japanese to conceal traps on the Kuril Islands that they had to give up to the Soviets at the end of the war. Matua was closed for Russian civilians uh, to prevent more victims, as far as we know. Now, I read the testimony of one woman who was born on the island in 1951. She recalled that Matua had 500 Soviet military personnel uh, during those years. There were pilots, artillerists, and border guards. 
they also recovered some of the Japanese weapons and transported to the mainland, uh, to the uh, Vanino harbor. She also recalled that there were inexplicable mysterious lights on the island and numerous rats. There was Soviet military present on that island from 1945 to 2001. And some of the Soviet border guards who started to investigate the island disappeared without a trace. Based on the letters of the former border guards to some modern Russian researchers, it becomes clear that the Japanese were sighted on Matua in the 1960s. So the Japanese never lost their interest in that island, but they're silent about it, of course. So how this, I, I don't know how this can be confirmed, but there are facts too, real facts. In 1989, the Soviets had observed green light coming from the slope of the Sarichev volcano as if it was coming from a projector. Uh, the Soviet border guards were dispatched uh, to the site, they were alerted to the mainland, but they didn't find anything at the site, nothing. And then in the year 2000, the border guard station was burned down. Uh, the soldiers were transported to the Russian mainland, and the island remained virtually uninhabited until 2016. Except for the rats, and they do exist there probably of the, because of the hidden food supplies in the underground storages and foxes. It's, this island doesn't have really much except for the volcano, for some very thick bushes, and for very few animals. And whatever else is being concealed down below in the underground city. In May of 2016, everything changed, and now the Russian military is in full control of the island. 200 members of the Joint Military Scientific Expedition, uh, officially organized by the Russian Geographic Society, visited the island uh, and spent four or so months on its soil. The expedition was headed by the Russian Vice Admiral Andrei Rebukhin. Admiral Avakant revealed some results of the expedition and the aspects of special interest to the Russian military. You see, they want to use the divers for the deep water exploration of the volcano's northern and northwestern sections. The volcano is active and it erupts approximately every 25 years. One of the largest eruptions took place in 1946. I wonder, was it not a man-made eruption. It was a very powerful eruption that could be seen and felt in a long distance from the island. The Russians also discovered remnants of the ancient volcano, several million years old, at the site. Everything the Russian expedition had recovered on Matua will be researched and analyzed. Now, the Russians are convinced that the island was mothballed long before the August of 1945. They are still trying to determine what is myth and what is reality. But they definitely discovered something interesting on that island. They did determine that the legends about the underground city constructed on Matua are based on facts. And they discovered many entrances that lead underground and all of the entrances have been blown up and blocked. The Russians excavated one such entrance and discovered numerous tunnels and warehouses, in turn connected with the above, above ground trenches and concrete emplacements. The island has a very curious structure, and it's an artificial hill that in Russian they call it Kruglaya, which means round. Inside this hill, Sopka, uh, that's the designation of that geographic location. There must be hangars or warehouses, but they cannot reach them, as the entrances are covered with layers of soil. The Russians found a narrow gauge railroad track that was used to bring loads to be stored underground. There are rumors that about 54 floors of secret communications are located underground inside the island. 
is this is there any truth to this hum uh, rumor? Uh, we do not know. But a very powerful cable was discovered uh, on site, so there is definitely something inside that hill. Admiral Avakans wants to research the little island of Taparkovi because he believes it is connected to Matua with underground tunnels. Independent Russian researchers believe uh, that the Japanese anchorage was located on Taparkovi. Um, the island had another name, of course, Iwaki in, in Japanese. The new expedition is set to sail to Matua in September of 2017. That expedition will consist of um, Russian military forces and experts and Russian scientists from the Academy of Sciences, Moscow State University and the Russian Geographical Society. What's interesting is they will be doing archaeological investigation of Matua. As far as I know, only the Ainu people had inhabited that island before, but I'm not sure what was found by Russian scientists. Hopefully we'll find out more. The island will become a permanent base for the Russian Pacific Fleet. This is being reviewed now, but there is little doubt that that's what's going to happen. Right now they did build a station on the island, a small outpost. The location of Matua is very advantageous because it will enhance Russian strategic capabilities in the Pacific region. Uh, the Russian long-range aviation will bring the coral chain under control and that's in a region that's, you know, today is far from being quiet. But we st most important to us is to find out, if we can, what does Matua hide inside its volcano and their underground city since 1945? Have the Japanese visited that island? Is the United States still interested in it? And why this sudden interest from the Russian armed forces in this small little island? In my book, Russian about Russian ufology and uh, USOs, unidentified submersible objects, I dedicate quite a lot of information to uh, the Pacific Ocean, to the Devil's Triangle, to the sightings uh, around the Sea of Ahots and others. It is a fascinating area. And I encourage, I really encourage people to study more about faraway places of our planet because there have been tremendous UFO and USO sightings. Matua has no stories that I can report to pretending to USOs or UFOs. But not that far away from the island, there were incidents of USO and UFO sightings. And of course, uh, I, I mentioned them in my book, Russia's USO Secrets, and I've discussed it in my lectures. And I think that the more attention you pay to the Far East, the more you will find out about tremendous secrets our planet holds. Thank you.